Next door in Kenya, the government there also presented its spending plan for the 2024-2025 fiscal year to lawmakers on Thursday. The President William Ruto-led administration says its new budget is looking to revitalize the country's economic growth. And economic indicators, some of them at least, do continue to point to a sustained recovery and stable economic growth. Critics, however, say that this plan does very little to help ordinary families across the country. CGTN's Ian Kenua tells us more. The proposed $303.5 billion budget was tabled before Parliament on Thursday, as per tradition among East African community member states. Yeah, Kenya's Finance Minister Njigun Nandongo says the 2024-2025 budget aims to tackle the country's debt while protecting its fragile economic recovery. Our economy has been unwinding from the effects of negative and even persistent global and domestic shocks that have pushed the economy to its lowest activity level. These shocks include the COVID-19 pandemic, second, the global supply chain disruptions, third, the effects of climate change from prolonged drought in 2021 and 2022, and even the floods of 2023-2024. Economic growth is expected to be in line with the ministry's expectation of 5.5% this year, from 5.6% in 2023, authorities say policy efforts have reduced the cost of living and created vibrance in an economy that is showing signs of strong recovery. Mr. Speaker, in order to safeguard macroeconomic stability and protect the fragile economic recovery, monetary and fiscal policies will remain very prudent. The Central Bank of Kenya will ensure inflation rate remains within target while maintaining a competitive exchange rate and stable interest rates. The 2024-2025 budget will be accompanied by the Finance Bill 2024 that will come before Parliament next week. The bill is a separate law outlining proposed tax increases on various goods and services, which critics say could cripple some sectors. We have evidence of uh, uh, the interventions uh, where, for example, uh, uh, when you look at the macro prices, which is inflation, exchange rates and interest rates, um, inflation is is down. Uh, you see stability on foreign exchange, uh, uh, which also uh, is is an indication of the economy is doing. But but you, uh, there is a concern when it comes to the cost of credit in the economy. Uh, interest rates are at seventeen uh, percent uh, uh, plus. So really, which business can be able to lend at that rate? The proposals have drawn strong resistance from the public as well as from the law society of Kenya. The budget, as, uh, as I see it, is not going to benefit most of us. It's going actually to bring a lot of pain to the most, uh, mostly to the common mananji. Because if uh, all the basic commodities are going to be affected by this uh, tax, which is actually being raised, like you say, you hear that uh, VAT will be from uh, 16 to 22 percent, or even if it goes to 18 percent, it's still too high. President William Ruto says the measures are aimed at reducing Kenya's reliance on borrowing to fund its budget. The country's total public debt stands at an estimated 68% of GDP for fiscal 2023-2024 and is expected to fall to 64.8% in the coming financial year. Ian Kinyua, CGTN. Now, to be clear, the finance bill is, or rather, a report on the finance bill is going to go to the floor of the House next week, Tuesday, for some fairly vigorous debate. But what exactly does this law, this proposed law, mean for households and businesses and investors? Let's discuss that in a bit more detail. Robert Miner is an associate director in charge of tax at Ernst & Young. is joining us now live on the program. So, Robert, the, the 2024 finance bill overall doesn't really do much to provide certainty on tax policy, at least not over the medium term. But from where you stand, what are the top three things on proposed tax policy changes that stood out to you? Uh, well, thank you very much, Lamanyang, uh, for having me on this uh, program. It's a um, pleasure. Now, uh, like you said, uh, this year we are having um, another round of uh, a very aggressive uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, push in terms of uh, changing tax uh, policies in Kenya. And, uh, you know, last year, or, you know, we, we, the medium-term revenue strategy was uh, issued or, you know, it was publicized and it's available to the general public. 
But what we have seen in this year's uh, finance bill is that a lot more things or changes are being proposed that were not actually highlighted in the medium-term revenue strategy. And obviously that doesn't help uh, any business in terms of uh, certainty, in terms of uh, taxes. Now, the key focus areas, one would be we have the issue of the eco levy, uh, and I think we have seen a trajectory where the government is now moving towards introducing more and more levies, uh, probably because uh, they have very many more headway in terms of introducing uh, additional taxes. So we have the eco levy, which is going to impact uh, quite a number of industries, uh, and I think that's a new levy which was not highlighted anywhere in the medium term uh, revenue strategy. Now, you also then uh, look at the level of, uh, you know, uh, scaling down tax expenditure. The number of items that they have, uh, the, the bill proposes uh, to move from either exempt to taxable or zero related to taxable. You know, in a case where the government is generally trying to do away with a lot of uh, tax expenditure that we've seen in the past. And obviously the key one that has been, uh, you know, the talk of town has been the motor vehicle uh, levy, which is obviously going to be quite uh, punitive for anyone who owns uh, a motor vehicle because, uh, I mean, the government itself is not able to be uh, to be clear as to whether they intended this to be an income tax, uh, you know, targeted on uh, specific people because there has been uh, claims that uh, they wanted to get those people who are not paying tax, they own ta cars, but, you know, it doesn't differentiate that. So those are the, the, the three key uh, observations, uh, I would say that I've seen in the current uh, year's uh, finance bill. The way the motor vehicle circulation tax is structured at the moment, because it's essentially saying we're going to charge this as 2.5% of the assessed value um, of that vehicle, right? But who's going to be the, uh, the ultimate determinant of what that assessed value is? Is it going to be the insurance company? Will government say, okay, whatever the insurance company thinks this car is worth? And insurance companies, because they want to limit their downside, their exposure, they tend to essentially look for the lowest possible number that they can get away with. Or are they going to go with the numbers that KRA tends to use when these vehicles come into the market? And that MSRP number tends to be much, much higher. So which of the two are we going to go with? Well, an interesting question right there, and, and I would say based on the bill as currently drafted, what uh, the bill has related it as a commissioner, which is the Kenya Revenue Authority, that they will issue some guidelines on how to determine the value of uh, motor vehicles. One, uh, if you think about uh, going with the insurance uh, company's, uh, you know, valuation, you know, for instance, uh, that if you are taking that part of insurance at the moment, you do not even require to get uh, your car to be valued. So that will be a major challenge, and you know a lot of cars in the market, uh, you know, they have, uh, they normally use that part of insurance. So that would be an issue there because then that would mean the insurance companies would have to require those uh, persons to get uh, those cars valued. Now, if they go with the KLA valuation, obviously there's a challenge there. And if you think about some cars which have been in the for instance, in the roads for 20, 30 years, eh, it, it is almost, uh, I don't know, the value that will be attributed to such cars if we were to depreciate them at uh, the rate of 10% for every year. I mean, they, they literally don't have any value for uh, tax purposes or they have very minimal value. So we, we shall wait to see the kind of guidance that will be issued by the Kenya Revenue Authority. But that's the expectation that uh, guidance will be issued on how to determine the value. And a common complaint that I know you've heard from your clients that we keep hearing from companies, um, EABL, for example, pointed that out when we spoke to them um, during the, the release of their results, is the cost of compliance, right? With tax policy, it's a huge burden for companies. So one of the things that happened here was that, uh, at least with respect to liquor sales, the, the finance minister says, okay, fine, we're gonna extend the timeline to submit excise duty on liquor sales to five days from 24 hours. Still punitive, but let's work with that. But are there any other changes that you saw in the finance bill or proposed from the finance minister that would, would essentially make it easier for companies and individuals to deal with their tax obligations? Uh, okay, thanks, Ramanya. You'll actually be surprised that uh, the proposal that uh, is being given to alcoholic uh, manufacturers uh, may not be, you know, anything uh, may not help them after five days. You know that uh, most uh, manufacturers uh, of uh, beverages uh, will have stock, leaving the stock room every other day, because you know, you have uh, various distributors, they are collecting uh, their stock on any, every other day. So what that means is that in, on, the, on day one, eh, uh, what you will uh, leave the stock room on day, day one, you will need to account for tax within five days. Let's assume you account on the fifth day. On day two, we'll also have other people who are coming to collect the same uh, beverages uh, from the stockroom. So that will mean that 
we go to account on day six. So after five days, they actually go back to the daily accounting of uh, these taxes. So when they look at it, I'm sure they will realize after five days, they actually need to account for these taxes on a daily basis. Uh, so it may not be uh, much of a relief as much as uh, on, on, on paper it seems to be a relief to them. Now, uh, beyond that, um, the bill is actually very heavy on taxes, on procedural matters and uh, making it easier for taxpayers. Unfortunately, it doesn't address that. We know there's a big uh, elephant in the room of uh, requiring taxpayers to ensure that they have a tax, uh, you know, tax invoice management system compliant invoices easier. And we know there are a lot of suppliers, particularly the SMEs, who have not managed to get into the system. So this is a key pinpoint which we hope the bill would address in terms of, for instance, extending uh, the timelines just to make sure that we provide a bit of room. Otherwise, we will have a case where some taxpayers might be, uh, you know, uh, some expenses might be disallowed next year because uh, they, they are getting the supplies from, let's say, farmers or SMEs who are still not compliant. So it's very, doesn't uh, provide uh, a better room in terms of uh, compliance. Uh, and we are hoping, uh, you know, we were hoping better things would come with this. Thank you. Indeed, we'll see what happens next week when uh, the Finance Committee returns its report to Parliament. Uh, we also saw some small changes to the proposal to raise excise duty on, on telephone services, internet data, money transfer services. They want to raise the rates there from 15% to 20% with the exception of mobile service providers. And I think that was a last minute um, change there. But the rate has been rising steadily right over the last decade. I think it was starting from 10%, but 20% is relatively high. Might that be the rate at which people start looking at their expenses and they think, actually, I shouldn't be using mobile money. Let me just go back to cash. Uh, yes, yes. This is a big challenge, by the way. Uh, when you actually combine the proposed increment in terms of uh, XI duty uh, with the proposed introduction of VAT on financial services, and when you look at the nature of services that they propose to introduce VAT on, eh, for instance, LTGS, uh, real-time uh, transfer of uh, money, that would be a service that would actually attract uh, VAT. Uh, among other services that would actually be more, you know, would discourage people from uh, transacting through the official uh, banking system. So the increase in exigency that has been going on, I mean, there has, there's no consistency. I would say we've, case, we've had cases where they've reduced and then the following year they, uh, they retain it back to 20%. Uh, so this inconsistency in terms of um, the policy on uh, financial services and the uh, services that are actually related to what uh, every other consumer in the market is using is a big headache. And now the, we are hoping that the VAT will not uh, go through because otherwise um, the cost of uh, using form of financial services will be very expensive and you will see a lot of... Uh, SMEs and uh, actually a lot of individuals diverting to the cash economy because uh, the cost of setting and saving money or transacting will be extremely high. Uh, one last question for you, and you touched on this a little earlier, the eco-levy, right? As proposed in the bill, uh, it applies at a rate of 750 shillings, just under $6 per kilogram. And yet this is the same government that in the same breath said we are trying to incentivize people um, to reduce the emissions as much as they can and part of that which is trying to convince drivers switch over to something with either a hybrid powertrain or an electric vehicle altogether if you're essentially charging uh, this sort of taxes on battery powered electric vehicles that's roughly three thousand six hundred uh, dollars on a new ev that's a disincentive to switch isn't it absolutely 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 and actually when you look at uh, the whole sort of incentive that they had introduced on uh, you know ev uh, they have all been uh, the, the proposal is now to do with them i mean there was an exemption on uh, vat for commercial buses that were and, and we've seen uh, for instance uh, a company that has set up a uh, base in kenya to Basi go you know, in this to, case. yeah basic go exactly to put together those buses so now the proposal is to introduce vat on that so the whole lot of incentives that were available to them, actually, they are about to be taken away. So if this doesn't uh, reverse within um, next week or the other week, then the whole concept of trying to encourage people to add EV will be almost impossible because, like you see, the cost of a battery. I mean, EV introduced that, that, that uh, cost per kg and a battery is a, a major component in an EV, then it's almost impossible then to acquire these uh, cars. So we are hoping... Uh, uh, they will review this and, and, and I think we had a discussion with some of the people in the National Treasury after they released the bill and they actually acknowledged 
well, some of the proposals at the equal level were not well thought out. Eh? So we are hoping they will actually also share their their input with the the, the national assembly to ensure that uh, the final uh, finance act that we receive will actually reflect, uh, you know, uh, well thought uh, proposals. Thank you.